All right, so it's been a long time. I am back, hopefully more consistent. I love how I say that in every video. Oh my God, I just climbed these stairs. So today's Sunday. I am going to work today. Hopefully, not hopefully, this is gonna be the last, I'm, how do I say this? In two weeks, I will be a lot more happier. Uh, I think I mentioned in my last video or the previous video how I've been working seven days a week to help out at the pediatric clinic. However, that's not attainable for me anymore. We're not doing that anymore. Um, in two weeks, I will be no longer doing this. So, so happy because it is Sunday today. It's 8.30. My first patient's at 9.30 and I have a full day today. And yesterday was a full day as well. And I'm just like, I just want to have a weekend to relax and just like chill. You know what I mean? Like, anyway, so. Good morning and welcome back to my channel. So I know it's been so long since I've made a video and honestly, like I've just been so busy. Um, as you can see, I'm in a new location. That's because I moved, yay. Finally, I'm looking a little busted right now. You know, I'm, I didn't put on any makeup for what I'm doing right now, which is teletherapy for the school district here. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Tiffany. I am a speech language pathologist. I work in a skilled nursing setting and recently I just stopped doing pediatric at the clinic, but I still right now am doing therapy for the school. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more consistent content which will be more consistent soon i feel like with all the move and everything and work and i was just really stressed so now that things have kind of slowed down a little bit it'll be easier for me to you know pick up the camera and try to film some things <sighs> hello guys welcome back to my channel so we are in present day now today is the 7th of december i keep trying to make a video and i never finish it or things happen and i get busy with work I got a comment on one of my videos a while ago asking about the classes in undergrad and what classes to expect. So I kind of wanted to go through that today. I know every like program is different, but I'm pretty sure, you know, we all take the same classes because you need those classes, you know, as prerequisites to get into a graduate program. So I'm going to go through the classes that I took and hopefully it is helpful to somebody. You can kind of get an idea of the classes to expect. So my computer is here. I'm going to be kind of glancing down and looking at it because obviously I don't remember. I'm just going to read them off and then I'll go back and kind of explain a little bit. So there is, okay, Introduction to Communication Disorders, Anatomy and Physiology of Speech Mechanism, Language Development, Clinical Phonetics. So those were the first four courses. Um, if you didn't make a beer better, this is for my program. If you didn't make a beer better in those courses, then you weren't you know, allowed to move on. So beer better in those. Um, neuroanatomy of communication disorders, language disorders in children, materials and methods for clinical practices, articulatory and phonological disorders, language disorders in adolescents, hearing science, audiology, oral rehab, American Sign Language. There was a supervised clinical practicum. So obviously this is getting more to like towards graduation. Introduction to education of children with exceptionalities and statistical methods, so a math course. So those are just classes related to speech and language pathology. And then in addition to that, we needed 21 hours of additional coursework. I call it like electives because um, they just require you to take other courses. Um, there's a huge list. I'm not gonna go through you know, all of them because there's a lot that you can pick from. It doesn't matter what you pick but I'll just say the ones that I took that I can remember. So I took infant toddler development, infant toddler relationships, psychology of adolescence, cognitive psychology, abnormal psychology, adult development and aging, and psychology of personality. I took all psychology courses because I was always interested in psych courses and also like, I thought I should choose something that's actually interesting to me so that it'll you know click naturally and I wouldn't have to put too much time studying for those classes and just kind of focus on my major. Okay, so going back to those courses in the beginning that I said that you had to have had a B or better. So that was Introduction to Communication Disorders, Anatomy, Physiology, Speech Mechanism, Language Development, and Clinical Phonetics. So I wanna uh, give a little blurb of what each course is about. So Introduction to Communication Disorders, um, a survey of the field of speech language pathology. Emphasis is placed on characteristics, etiology, diagnosis, and treatment of various communication disorders. So that class was just kind of like a big picture class. I didn't go too much in depth, but it gave you an idea of things that you would be studying later on in the semester and then also in grad school. Anatomy and physiology of the speech mechanism, major emphasis on the respiration system in speech, the structure for phonation, the larynx, the trachea, the palate, the pharynx, the nose and sinuses, and the structure for articulation. I think that's pretty straightforward. I remember this one being like the placement and manner of articulation. So you kind of learned velar sounds, lingual, bilabial, a little bit of that, not too much. And then it kind of touched on, you know, like the speech mechanism. So the palate, the pharynx, the nose, the sinuses, like 
nasal sounds, things like that. All right, so there's language development. Theory of the development of speech and language from the birth cry to normal acquisition of language, factors influencing speech, i.e. intelligence, environments, age, sex, and hearing, and analysis of current research. Social aspects of language also included. I remember this was my least favorite class because in my opinion, it was so boring. Yeah, I just remember not liking any courses that were that had to do with language unless it was like abnormal. And then there's clinical phonetics, which was a detailed study of the specific anatomical process in producing sounds. And this class you learned about, you know, different phonemes and you learned how to transcribe and the symbols that go with all those. So those four courses I just spoke about, you need to be or better to move on in my program. I have no idea how it is anywhere else. Um, the next class is Neuroanatomy of Communication Disorders. This course says it's a continuation of anatomy and physiology of speech mechanism. So the only difference is that there's an emphasis on neuroanatomy and neurological basis for communication. So more in depth for that course. Materials and methods for clinical practices is the next course. This course um, was a presentation of procedures for clinicians in clinic. Procedures include philosophy of learning, reinforcement techniques, therapy techniques, and paperwork. Um, so I remember this class was, we kind of learned about um, writing goals as well. I remember that because I didn't even know about goals and knew nothing about that. Um, and that was introduced in this course and we learned how to write goals. What else? Reinforcement technique, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, uh, how to take data. Um, how to make your own data sheets, stuff like that. The next class is articulatory and phonological disorders. Um, this was an in-depth study of the phonetic and phonemic analysis of speech sounds. Be straightforward. The next class is language disorders in adolescence. I loved learning about the disorders in language. Um, I thought it was a lot more interesting than the generic um, language course. This course focuses on language disorders in pre-adolescence and adolescence with emphasis on assessment of and intervention for a variety of spoken and written language difficulties. So next course is hearing science. Hearing science, um, anatomy and physiology of the hearing mechanism, nature of sound, overview of hearing, hearing loss, hearing disorders, and screening procedures. This course was fun. I love the professor for all the audiology courses and clinical phonetics, like she was my favorite professor. Um, so she always made everything easy to understand. Um, but this course, you know, you learned about the outer, inner, and middle ear, um, you know, the structure of the ear, hearing loss, a brief overview of hearing loss and screening procedures. Um, actually not so brief. It was pretty, everything was pretty in depth. I say brief because like, you know, later on in grad school courses and in courses to come for, you know, later on the semester, it goes more in depth. Next we have audiology, assessment of hearing and hearing disorders with emphasis on standard audiological battery, pediatric audiology and electrophysiological and other special tests. Audiology, super fun. I think it was in this course I was thinking, should I go into audiology instead of speech? Like I really went back and forth. Audiology was so interesting to me. Like, there's a lot that goes into it, you know what I mean? And I think it's pretty cool, I don't know. The next class is oral rehab, um, treatment of hearing disorders. There was a lot of information in this course, like a lot, a lot, um, yeah, oral rehab. So, and then there was American Sign Language. Not gonna talk about that. Obviously we all know what that is. Statistical methods, math. And the other class that was required for me was Introduction to Education of Children with Exceptionalities. I'm just gonna read what it says. This course will give an overview of all areas of exceptionality. Emphasis will be given to the integration of special education and general education. That was a good course, especially if you're, you know, geared towards, you know, being a school-based SLP. It's, it's good, it's good to know. All right, so those are all the courses. I hope that helped a little bit. I hope to give you kind of an idea of classes to take if you're going into undergrad or you're going into an SLP program. Um, those are the classes that you may be taking. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am going to stop the video here. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I would love that and that would help me a lot. Um, I have more videos planned out coming out in the near future, so please look out for those. Um, comment down below if you are interested in the field or if you are a speech and language pathologist. Um, do you work in the schools? Do you work in home health? Do you work in acute, sniff? I like to know, I think it's interesting. And if you like it, what are the pros and cons? <laughs> um, Cause there are plenty. I could also do a video on that as well. I will end the video here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.